We're looking for Gadget. For Gadget? Oh, he ran past here a few minutes ago. Where did he go? Oh, to my room. He's probably under the bed again. He's doing something weird. Officer Lewis, are you gonna arrest him? Ruth? Orba? We have to stop. Do you need a rest, Naomi? No. We need to go back. I'm Miss Jean. Join me on a trip to Discovery Mountain, where the air is clear, clear enough to hear your imagination, and where every day is an exercise in faith. Join me for today's expedition in Discovery Mountain. In our last episode of this story series, You Belong, Officer Lewis and Kayla seem to have solved the Puffy Heart mystery. Did they catch up with Gadget and did he have something to do with the case? Let's listen and find out. And in today's episode, we'll hear a true faith exercise story. It's the story of Ruth and Naomi from the Bible. The story takes place in Bethlehem and is the story of one of Jesus' ancestors. Did you know that Ruth was related to Jesus? Well, let's listen to today's episode called Ruth and Naomi and see if this story encourages you as much as it does Judah's mom. Oh, Officer Lewis, Kayla, is everything all right? Good evening, Natasha. We're looking for Gadget. For Gadget? He ran past here a few minutes ago. Where did he go? To my room. He's probably under the bed again. He's doing something weird. Dad, that's it. May we come in? Uh, Yeah, come on in. I believe that Gadget is our suspect in the case of the stolen Puffy Heart. Gadget? This way. All right, Gadget. Come on out from under the bed. Hey, that's Jamie's coat. She couldn't find it this morning. It's like he's giving it back. Aha! It's the Puffy Heart. Wait, you mean it's been under the bed the whole time? Oh, thanks, boy. This puffy heart seems to be in good shape. Gadget, did you think this hurt Jamie? Is that why you took it? Hurt her? Oh, when she fell off the ladder. Yeah, he's a loyal dog. But why is he giving it back now? Well, Jamie took her bandage off. I guess he saw that she was all right. All right, Gadget. Now go back under that bed and bring out the rest of the coats. Why all the coats? Well, what does Gadget usually do when he wants to hide something? Oh, he buries stuff in the backyard. Well, this time of year, the ground is covered in snow and frozen. Oh, so he buried the puffy heart and coats under my bed. Gadget, gotcha, you're too smart. You caused us a lot of trouble, boy. Uh, Officer Lewis, are you going to arrest him? Well, no. Gadget wasn't actually stealing. He was protecting. Come here, boy. Who needs a snuggle? Huh. I don't see a case like this every day. I'm going back to the station to write up a report. Dad, would you trust me to take the puffy heart back to Trekkers for you? Of course, Kayla. You've been a great crime-solving assistant. I might have to make you deputy one day. Really? One day. All right, thank you. Merry Christmas, Officer Lewis. Merry Christmas. Gadget, you stay out of trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Natasha, do you and Gadget want to come with me to Trekkers? Just wait until Jamie hears what happened. Uh, no, you and Gadget go ahead, Kayla. Jake will probably be there, and I just seem to annoy him. Jake's still acting weird around you? I'm afraid so. He doesn't like me very much. Well, I'll talk to him. No, don't worry about it, Kayla. Solving one case in a day is enough. All right, but I won't forget. Come on, Gadget, let's get this puffy heart back where it belongs. Bye, Kayla. Bye, Gadget. Hey, everyone. Look at what I have. Kayla, you found the puffy heart. Whoa. Kayla, you stole it? Thanks a lot, Jake. No, I didn't steal it. I helped to solve the case. Then who did steal it? Oh, hey, Mom, Mr. Simon. You're just in time. In time for what? For what, Judah? Kayla just solved the case. The puffy heart's back. 
Sheila, who stole the puffy heart? Mr. Simon, you're looking at him. No, Gadget? <laughs> it wasn't exactly stealing. He did it to protect you. When I fell, where was it? Under Natasha's bed, buried under, under a, a pile, pile of, of coats. coats. I knew he had something to do with all the missing coats. <laughs> Judah, will you hang it back on the window where it belongs? Sure. I'll ask Officer Lewis for all the details. And I'd better go and see if he needs any help. No, I'll walk with you. I've got an important question for Officer Lewis about Gadget's paw prints. Paw prints? Yeah, you know, to book him for the crime. Oh, brother. Jake, no one's booking Gadget for a crime. Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye, Kayla. Bye, Jake. Bye, Kayla. Jamie, would you make Miss Michelle a cup of tea? I'm going to call Officer Lewis. Of course. Peppermint or chamomile? Thanks, Jamie. Peppermint tea sounds perfect. Judah, come and have a seat with us. Hey, Mom, did Mr. Simon help you sign the papers with Miss Lucy? Are you really going to buy the cafe? Well, I'm not quite ready to sign anything just yet. Oh, right. Her brother has to decide first if he wants to buy the family business. Yes, and I'm not quite sure if it's the right decision. What do you mean? Well, Miss Lucy is your father's relative. I'm just not sure that I fit into this plan. One piping hot peppermint tea. Thank you, Jamie. You just seem to belong here in Discovery Mountain. So will we, Mom. Miss Lucy's cafe will be perfect for you, Miss Michelle. God brought you here. Did he? I just don't know yet. It's like the story of Ruth. Oh yeah, and didn't that story happen in Bethlehem? Where Jesus was born? Well, Officer Lewis confirmed all the details. Oh, Granddad, didn't Ruth and Naomi live in Bethlehem? Yes, they did. Is it the same Bethlehem where Jesus was born? Yes. In fact, Ruth is an ancestor of Jesus. She's listed in the book of Matthew. She is? And she was an outsider. God brought her to Bethlehem. Really? Well, I suppose I should read that story. It sounds very interesting. Ooh, Granddad, would you tell us the story? I'll pour us all a cup of peppermint tea. Well, all right. Let's see, where do I begin? A very long, long time ago, there was a terrible famine in Bethlehem. Elimelech heard that there was still food in the land of Moab, and so he and his wife Naomi and their two sons moved from Bethlehem to Moab. Their life was good in Moab at first, but difficult times soon arrived. Oh, oh Lord, what am I to do? How will I provide for my family? You see, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, died. And as if that wasn't sad enough already, soon after that her two sons died. Oh Lord, what will Ruth and Orba and I do? Where do we belong? Naomi heard that the famine was over in Bethlehem. She and her daughters-in-law prepared to go, to go back to her home. Naomi, I don't have room in my sack for my silver tray. Oh, Ruth, it's too precious to leave behind. All the memories. Yes, I know, but I can't put another thing in my sack or my poor donkey won't be able to carry me. Put it in my sack. All right, thank you. I'm ready, Naomi. My donkey is loaded. All right, Orpa, <laughs> come. Let's begin our journey before the sun is hot in the sky. Orpa, will you be all right? Yes, let's, let's go. Naomi, Ruth, and Orpa traveled in the early morning light. As they rode, Naomi thought about her daughters-in-law leaving their only home. Ruth, Orpa, we have to stop. Do you need a rest, Naomi? No. We need to go back. Are you all right, Naomi? I can't take you both away from your families. We'll go with you, Naomi. We don't need to turn back. Ruth, Orpa, you're like daughters to me, but you must go back to your own families. I can't take you away from them. No, Naomi, you are our family. I'm sorry that our family had such misfortune. My sons, <laughs> your husbands, are gone. Now, return to your own mothers, my daughters-in-law. I'll miss you. I'll miss you, Naomi. You're sure you'll be all right? Come here. Yes, I'll be all right. Return to your family. Goodbye, Naomi. 
<laughs> goodbye, my dear. Now, Ruth, come and kiss me goodbye. No, Naomi, I'll never leave you. Orpah's going back to her family. It's all right. I'll manage on my own, somehow. Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Now, Ruth... Naomi, I'm determined to stay with you. Well, then, let's go. There are many miles between here and Bethlehem. Naomi and Ruth continued on their journey. After several long days, they arrived in Bethlehem. Naomi returned home, and Ruth didn't know it yet, but she was returning home, too. Welcome to Bethlehem. Do you seek lodging for the night? Oh, why, yes. My daughter-in-law, Ruth, and I... It couldn't be. Naomi, is that you? Yes. Oh, a daw? Yes. Oh, Naomi, welcome back. Terza, look who's here. Naomi? Is it really you? Terza? You haven't changed a bit. I'd recognize you anywhere. Ada, Terza, this is my daughter-in-law, Ruth. <laughs> Welcome, Ruth. Are Elimelech and your sons with you? Well, no, they're not. Elimelech and Malon are no longer alive. Oh, I'm so sorry. And Chilean? Gone. Oh, Naomi. Please don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. My life has been bitter. But Naomi, it's all right. Let her go. I'll look after her. I promise. Ruth, here's your silver tray. Thank you, Naomi. Please place it inside my sack. Will it be safe there? Oh, yes. That's the best place for it until I find a home for it. You're dressed differently. Yes. Do you like my headscarf? It'll protect me from the sun. It's lovely. What are you planning? Well, I thought I could go out into the fields and pick up the leftover bits of barley as the workers harvest. They won't mind. I've seen other women doing it. It's hard work, Ruth. I know. Well, if you wish it, then go, my daughter. Thank you, Naomi. I'll be back before nightfall. Bye. God be with you, daughter. God be with you. Ruth found a field busy with workers, and as she had told her mother-in-law, she followed behind the harvesters, picking up the pieces of barley grain that fell behind them. Ruth worked hard without taking a rest. The owner of the field noticed. Boaz, your barley is golden this year. What a harvest. Yes, yes it is. Tell me, who's that woman gleaning the dropped pieces of barley? That's Ruth, Naomi's daughter-in-law. Ah, I heard that Naomi had returned. Treat her well and give her water to drink. I'll go and greet her. Yes, Boaz, as you wish. Hello, I'm the owner of this field. My name is Boaz. Oh, excuse me, sir. I was only picking up the barley that the others dropped. I'm sorry. Please, you are welcome in my field. I've told my man to treat you well and give you water to drink. Thank you. May I ask why you are so kind to me, a stranger? I have heard of your kindness to your mother-in-law, Naomi. May the Lord repay you for your work. Thank you, kind sir. Please, please, just call me Boaz. Thank you, Boaz. Ruth worked hard all day, and as the workers prepared for a meal, Boaz approached her again. Please, come join us to eat. We have bread and vinegar to dip it in. Thank you again for your kindness. I am hungry. Well, come and eat. Ruth ate with the other field workers. And when no one was looking, she slipped some of the bread into her pocket to take home for Naomi. Thank you for the meal. I will return tomorrow if that is all right with you, Boaz. Yes, of course. Good night, Ruth. Good night. Listen up. Yes, Boaz? When she returns tomorrow, let her pick up the fallen pieces right next to the sheaves. As you wish, Boaz. And let some of the sheaves fall on purpose. Let her pick those up. As you wish, Boaz. Naomi! Naomi! Ruth, is that you? Yes, I'm home at last. Oh, I was worried about you. It was a long day, but here, I brought you some bread. Oh 
my dear, thank you. The field owner is a kind man. He let me gather the dropped grains all day and invited me to the evening meal. Who was this kind man? His name is Boaz. Boaz? Yes. May the Lord bless him. He is showing his kindness to us as well as to your late husband. Boaz is one of our closest relatives, one of our family redeemers. He invited me to finish gathering the barley and the wheat harvest with his workers. Go, stay in Boaz's fields. God is taking care of us. I will, Naomi, I promise. Now enjoy the bread I brought home for you. There will be more to come. <laughs> Ruth finished the harvest. Boaz and his workers treated her kindly. One night after the harvest was complete, Naomi had an idea. Ruth, Boaz will be winnowing barley at the threshing floor tonight. Yes, he had a wonderful harvest this year. You must go and speak to him. Must I? I've just come in from the fields. Wash and put on clean clothes and go. He will tell you what to do. All right, Naomi, I trust you. It was dark when Boaz finally noticed Ruth at the threshing floor. Who's there? It's me, Ruth. Ruth? What are you doing here? Boaz, you are a close relative. Will you take me under your wing? You are a family redeemer. Ruth, everyone knows that you are a virtuous woman. I want to take you under my wing. However, there is one person that is a closer relative. I must check with him first. All right. Thank you, Boaz. Now quietly go home to Naomi. Good night, Boaz. Ruth, wait. Yes? Bring me your shawl. Here it is. Hold it open so that I may pour in some barley. Take it home for you and Naomi. Thank you for your kindness, Boaz. Ruth ran home to Naomi, the shawl full of golden barley clutched close so that she didn't drop a single sheaf. Is that you, my daughter? It's me. Boaz will care for us. But first, he has a closer relative that he must speak to. Oh, Ruth, the Lord has provided. Yes, and look inside my shawl. Six ephahs of barley. Praise be to God. Now, Ruth, sit still a while. Boaz won't rest until he's arranged everything. He will care for us. Mr. Simon here. Are you planning a road trip? Take us with you. The Discovery Mountain audio CD sets let you take Discovery Mountain with you anywhere and are fun for the whole family to listen to together. Each season's beautifully designed audio CD set contains hours of listening enjoyment, no internet connection required. Available at discoverymountain.com slash store or 1-877-566-7365. Hi, I'm Michelle Stutz and I play Michelle Harris. Part of my regular job is to let you know about what's happening here at Discovery Mountain. I invite you to sign up for our online newsletter. Visit discoverymountain.com and sign up. I'll personally send you updates each week with the latest on our episodes, production, and more. Visit discoverymountain.com and sign up for the online newsletter today. True to his word, the next day Boaz went to the city gates in Bethlehem. Ah, oh, Boaz, how was your harvest this year? My harvest was exceptional as I pray yours was. Yes, it was. There's another matter I'd like to speak with you about. Is this official business? Yes. Come in and sit. Wave your hand to the city elders that they may witness our agreement. Yes, of course. Make room for them to join us. Gentlemen, you have some official business? Yes, please take a seat. It's about our relative, Naomi. I'm listening. I have heard the sad news that Elimelech has died. Yes, and Naomi has returned from Moab. Will you help her out by being her family redeemer? Yes, I'm interested. Naomi's son, Malon, also died. His widow, Ruth, returned with Naomi. Will you help her as well? Well, I would like to, but I'm afraid that I just can't. 
Could you take them under your care, Boaz? I will. That sounds official to me. Boaz, take off your sandal and give it to him. Of course. My sandal shows my word. I agree. I will buy all the land that once belonged to Elimelech, Malon, and Shelon. And I will marry Ruth and make her my wife. May the Lord bless your household. We are all witnesses. May the Lord bless your home. May May the the Lord Lord bless bless her. May you be famous in all Bethlehem. Thank you all. I must tell Ruth and Naomi the good news. Boaz and Ruth were married and set up a house and home together. The days were full of joy. Ruth, look what I found. Oh, Naomi, my silver tray. I had nearly forgotten about it. You have a home and a family again. That's almost true. We have a home and family again. And look, the silver tray fits perfectly on the shelf above the hearth. Ah, it looks perfect there. It looks, oh. Oh, Ruth, is it time? Oh, yes, this baby is ready. Naomi held Ruth's hand as she gave birth. The baby boy was beautiful, and Ruth and Boaz named him Obed. Naomi loved Obed as if he were her own son. Naomi, we're here to see the baby. A dog, come in. Oh, I can't wait to get a look at him. Come in, Terza. Ruth, we have visitors. Welcome. (laughs) If you're here to hold the baby, you may have to wait a while. Naomi hardly lets go of him. I'll get you a cup of cool water. Come in. I'll let you take a look at him. Ada and Terza, meet Obed. He's lovely. Blessed be to God for sending you both to Boaz to care for you. Yes, the Lord took care of us. And Naomi, Ruth loves you. She's better to you than seven sons. Yes, I know. She followed me all the way here to a place I loved, to a strange home for her. But this is where Ruth belongs. God brought her here to Bethlehem. Yes, he did. Praise the Lord. He is good. Obed grew up and had a son named Jesse. And Jesse had a son named David, David the king. And many years later, on the very first Christmas, another king was born in Bethlehem. His name was Jesus. Granddad, I love that story. Yeah, me too. God brought Ruth to Bethlehem, and she became an ancestor to Jesus. I guess I never thought about Bethlehem being a place where other people besides Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus lived. Yeah, I guess I never thought about that either. God brought just the right people where they needed to be long before Jesus' birth. Yeah. Hey, Mom, what did you think of the story? What's that, Judah? Did you say something? (laughs) Yeah, I asked what you thought of the story of Ruth and Naomi from the Bible. I, uh, well, I don't know what I feel. This is a really strange emotion. Michelle, are you all right? Let me get you a hot cup of peppermint tea. You didn't even touch yours. Peppermint tea? Oh, yes, we should serve that at the cafe, too. Mom, are you all right? Judah, I think I know why you wanted to live here in Discovery Mountain. I felt as if that Bible story was just for me. (laughs) Cool, isn't it? It is. I just want this all to work out. I I want it all to be, uh, I don't know. Well, yes, I want it all to be true. (laughs) It is true. It really is. Miss Michelle, I'll ask Granddad to put your tea in a to-go mug. Judah, come help me. Oh, okay, Jamie. Granddad, can you put Miss Michelle's tea in a to-go mug? Sure. Good idea, Jamie. Judah, your mom needs some rest. This has been a stressful day for her. A stressful day? It's been a stressful year. My mom does so much for Gracie and me. I just hope and pray that we get the cafe. If it's meant to be, it'll happen, Judah. Your family belongs here. (laughs) I think so, too. Um, I should probably get my mom home now. (laughs) Good night, Judah. I'll say an extra prayer for you, Gracie, and your mom tonight. Thanks, Mr. Simon, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Judah. Well, Jamie, I see our puffy heart thief is curled up asleep. Gadget looks so innocent when he's sleeping, doesn't he? I just love that dog. He loves you. What a day this has been. I never could have guessed that Gadget stole the puffy heart. Me neither. I wonder what's inside. (laughs) Me too. Should we take just a little peek, you know, make sure it's all right? 
Jamie, the Ward's Wishes toy drive goes until the day before Christmas. We have to wait until Christmas Day. Uh, well, do you promise that we can open it on Christmas Day and see what's so valuable inside? I promise. Now, in the meantime, we have a store to clean up. Come on, you wipe down the tables and I'll close out the register. You can sweep the floor and I'll take out the trash. We've got some dishes to pick up. Oh man, there's so much to do, I can't believe it. I agree with Jamie. I can't wait to find out what the ward's puffy heart is filled with. How about you? Well. The good news is that we'll find out in our next and last episode of this series called You Belong. The story of Ruth and Naomi is one of my favorites. Ruth was an ancestor to Jesus, and God took a woman from Moab and made her part of his family. Will Judah and Miss Michelle become a permanent part of the Discovery Mountain family? And speaking of family, I hope that Jake and Natasha can settle their differences. Join us again next time, where we'll find out. Hi, I'm Director Doug, and I hope that you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. You know, I never thought about the story of Ruth and Naomi as being a Christmas story. But it is. It takes place in Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. And Ruth is one of Jesus' ancestors. This season is called You Belong. We all have a place in God's plan a place where we belong, just like Ruth and just like Michelle, Judah, and Jake in Discovery Mountain. Go to discoverymountain.com and click on this episode, Ruth and Naomi. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see a little pencil. Click the pencil to download and print an activity sheet with a fun reminder of how we belong to God's family, each and every one of us. Join us next time for the conclusion of Season 7. See you then. I'm Miss Jean, and you've been listening to Discovery Mountain, where the air is clear, clear enough to hear your imagination, and where every day is an exercise in faith. To listen to other episodes and to send us a message, visit us at discoverymountain.com or write to us at Discovery Mountain, P.O. Box 999, Loveland, Colorado, 80539. And in Canada, write to Box 2127, Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, L1H7V4. This is a production of The Voice of Prophecy. Join us again next time here at Discovery Mountain, where every day is an exercise in faith. Ruth and Naomi was written by Jean Boonstra and post-produced in Ontario, Canada by Douglas Bruce and Danny Columbia.